But now we'll shift our focus ahead to Saturday's Champions League final between Liverpool and Real Madrid. Uh, this is taking place in Paris. Liverpool, they're plus 110 on the three-way money line. Madrid, plus 250. The draw, plus 265. Uh to lift the trophy, Liverpool minus 175, Real Madrid plus 140. Anthony and BJ, like we, we've talked a lot about both of these teams in in similar fashions, but also differently, right? Like we've known Liverpool, the price on Liverpool has been inflated all season long, but they kept winning. And we talked about how Real Madrid kept over performing their metrics. Uh, so the price was always a little inflated on them, but they kept winning and they won uh, from, you could call non-sustainable or unsustainable styles, right? They came back to be PSG. They had a last gasp winning uh, effort against Chelsea in a comeback. And then of course the Man City game, which will go down uh, as one of the craziest Champions League comebacks ever. And then you look at the other side, you got Liverpool. It couldn't have been more straightforward for them in the knockout round, Inter, Benfica and Villarreal. So I think what, what ends up happening with these, these games, these champions, like these finals, cup finals. You, I mean, even when you think about like the Super Bowl or, or championship games, one-off games, they're outliers. Um, we talked about this a little bit before the Premier League final uh, weekend, where it doesn't really matter what these two teams' expected goals numbers are coming into the season or into this game, right? It does it just doesn't matter? This is a ninety-minute or maybe a little bit more, if if it goes to extra time, game of soccer. So you can really just throw that all out the window, and your raw ha- handicapping kind of has to take over. You can look at the 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 numbers and the metrics and what they tell you. But this is, you're not handicapping Real Madrid long term. You're not handicapping Liverpool for long term, thinking, oh, I'm going to beat the market to a Liverpool fatigue thing, or I'm going to beat the market to Real Madrid overperforming. What you're beating, what you're doing here is just looking at one game, 90 minutes in at a neutral venue, and you're saying, all right, how do these two teams match up? And where does the value lie? Uh, so, BJ, let's start with you. Are you tempted by either price here on the three way money line or the price to, to lift the trophy? How are you playing? This year's so, Champions League final. Yeah, I I think there's a ton of value on Liverpool to win this in regular time. There's a couple of things that are a little concerning. And yes, we can talk about the numbers, but the path that you mentioned for Real Madrid, it is quite insane. I mean, the first leg against PSG, they get completely dominated. It was like 2.9 expected goals to 0.4. PSG scores in the, the 94th minute to go up one nothing. Then they go up one nothing in the second leg, and then Benzema goes berserk and scores three. And I believe he scored two, and somebody else scored one, and they beat PSG. Then they go, like you mentioned, against Chelsea, go up three one in the first leg. Then they go down three nothing, and then get a goal, get an extra time, and then win an extra time. And then obviously we know what happened with Manchester City. Throughout all of that, Real Madrid has created ten point nine expected goals and given up fourteen against non. Uh, Shakhtar and FC Sheriff matches. So including the two inter matches from the group stage, they've scored 17 and allowed 11. So we're talking close to a 10 goal differential between what was expected. That's crazy. It's just insane. They are the Kings of Europe. You can, I wouldn't call their, I mean, obviously there's been some luck involved through their run, but their style of play really can set up for them for success in this match, which what they've tried to do, uh, essentially against both Chelsea and PSG and even Manchester City, is sit deep and just look to hit them on the counter, which did work against Manchester City. It did work against Chelsea. And essentially, once the match kind of gets chaotic or somebody scores first and kind of opens up, Real Madrid seems to play a little bit better. Now, can they do that again against Liverpool? I'm not so sure. But... Right now, we don't know the status of Fabinho. We don't know the status of Thiago, which is massively important for Liverpool if they want to do what PSG did to Real Madrid in the first leg, which is not allow them to get out in transition at all or create anything going forward. If those two are playing, I'm very confident that Liverpool can thwart off any type of counterattack that Real Madrid is going to throw at them, much better than Manchester City did in that first leg when they were obviously down a couple defenders. Kyle Walker was out. John Stones got hurt. And if you remember... Uh, we had um, Fernandinho playing right back and getting cooked by Vinicius Jr. I don't think that's going to happen here against Liverpool. Real Madrid, what's interesting is that Real Madrid actually played through pressure very well against both City and Chelsea. Only one of the four matches did uh, City or Chelsea post uh, over 30% pressure success rate, which is really, really good because those two are the two of the three best pressing teams in the Premier League. Um, but with that being said, purely if we look at numbers, 
Real, or Liverpool plus 1.45 expected goal differential per 90 minutes in the Premier League, the most difficult league in the world. Real Madrid plus 0.72 expected goal differential in La Liga, which is a step, a little bit of a step below the Premier League. Liverpool's basically doubled their output. So I have Liverpool projected at minus 150 to win this in regular time, minus 234 to lift the trophy. So I'm taking the price in Liverpool at plus 110. I am going to wait until match time, though. I'm going to wait for the statuses of Fabinho and Thiago. I'll probably still end up playing Liverpool, but if those two are out, I think I will get a better price on the three-way money line. Uh, the price to lift the trophy is a little too juicy for me, so I'm going to take a shot on them winning it in regular time because the run has to end for Real Madrid at some point. I, I, it's playing this type of defense. We'll end on Saturday. We're, we're at the final, though. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, I mean, we are at a final, but I mean, even win, those matches... Lose. If they get pinned in with Cruz and Modric back there trying to defend, it just doesn't work. It's happened through every single stage of the Champions League. Those two back there, and Casemiro is obviously one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, but it just hasn't worked. So going against the attack, a team with the attacking prowess like Liverpool, and I said the same thing about Manchester City, who knows? Maybe Real Madrid will luck box their way to the final and win this whole thing. I know Michael would love that, but again, I, I, you know, we have a saying on the show at some point we got to play numbers. I understand it's a final. But I got to play Liverpool plus 110 in regular time to win because I think there's just tremendous value on it. Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, you, if you look at the numbers, if you look at all the signals that the metrics are going to tell you, it's going to say you, you're probably going to bet Liverpool. But this isn't the round of 16. It's not like a group stage match. These aren't two teams playing in the league and you're, you're, you're trying to like figure out where they're going, trending up, trending down. This is a final, like you said. And I actually think there are some matchup things that work out for Real Madrid the injuries are one, right? Like if, if Fabinho's out, if Thiago's out, that's big trouble. Then the fatigue issues that we've seen from uh, Liverpool. I mean, I test wise, you could see in that Wolves match, you could see against Aston Villa, you could see against Southampton that they, they're at their, the end of their rope and you can't blame them. They've played 60 something matches this season across a ton of different competitions. So you're going to get at the very least, you know, Fabinho and Thiago, Virgil van Dijk, Salah, if they play, which we know that, uh, Van Dyke and Salah will, you're not getting them at 100%. Um, and then if the other two guys play, you're definitely not getting them even close to 100%. And then you look at, I think you, you talked about Vinicius Jr. I, I think he can have his way with Trent Alexander Arnold, right? Like Trent, we, we know what, we know how good Trent is going forward. We know that he's a little suspect going the other way, right? And yeah, he's not that great of a defender. Yeah, we, we saw what That's happened. a news flash to some people. Some yeah. people think that he's this amazing, you know, type of right back he's a great he's one of the best ball progressors and creators from right back position but he is not that good of a defender and without without Fabinho there to kind of put out the fire if 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 Trent is caught forward like that's an issue and without Van Dyke or if if, with a you know compromise Van Dyke that's an issue um so I do think like if you're just breaking this down because once again this is an in a vacuum game you get you get a couple of these outliers every season in every sport I'm just going to take the price. I'm going to almost always going to take the price and I'm going to probably bet uh, Real Madrid here be- because they, they've kind of also shown in like moments like this, these kind of games come down to game management and winning in the, in the weird moments, limiting mistakes and stuff like that. And Ancelotti is such a, he's such a pragmatic manager in that regard. I mean, I watched it with Everton. Like he's, he like just knows how to, you know, get his team to do the right thing at the right time and to put out fires whenever, um, it looks like they're, they have their backs against the wall. Uh, so I actually really don't hate just completely throwing everything out the window and going with Madrid because I, I mean, it's a cup final. Like this is, it's a cliche to say, but when you're betting, if you're betting a 38 game season, it's very, very different from betting a one game outlier, uh, at the end of that 38 game season as well. And plus like, is there going to be like some sort of weird hangover effect from what Liverpool just went through? Uh, in the Premier League too, where they just gave everything to, and then ended up losing. One so, thing I'll say to that though, is this is a re- huge revenge spot. You know, with Liverpool losing to Real Madrid 3-1 back in 2018, the famous Sergio Ramos, did he injure Mo Salah? You know, I know there's a bunch of conspiracy theorists out there that he say did. he actually didn't hurt him, but I mean, Mo Salah wanted Real Madrid. He said that right before the final. He did not want to play Man City. He wanted Real Madrid to get... Well, there were. Of course he wanted to play them. Yeah. So you talk about... Although right now, that's not the case. Yeah, fatigue. If if they were playing, you know, PSG, yeah, I could say, you know, we can talk about the fatigue, but they're playing the team that just beat them, you know, a few years ago. uh, And 
injured one of their best players in the process. So I think that they will be hungry and come out firing because this is their last match. I mean, you give everything you have for the final. So I, I kind of throw the fatigue out the window with the revenge factor. It could, yeah, no, it could. I mean, it could be. Um, but that's that's the thing. Like, you, there's so much there's so much here to kind of just jump into and to like sink your teeth into. And at, at the end of the day, none, none of it's going to matter. There could be a red card in the eight minute, right? Like we could see a crazy goal. Like we saw <laughs> oh, in that, I, Madrid, right. Think about, I have, uh, I have referee stats for, for the prop what section. Game? What was the Liverpool's goalie? Uh, Lourdes Carius. Lourdes Lourdes Carius, Carius, right. Yeah. Right. You could see a mistake. Like, like those things will happen. Like that, that happens in a, in a, in a one game sample of soccer. Like, so it's going to be chaos. It's, it's a cup final. It's going to be in Paris. The crowds are going to be nuts. And you're getting both teams at the end of their ropes. So I just, I trust Madrid in, in these kind of situations. Uh, not to mention they've got the most clinical striker in the world uh, going up against uh, what could be, a, like I said, compromised Van Dyke. Uh, Anthony, you've been sitting quietly. You want to talk about your Reds though? Yeah, my Reds, you know, uh, apparently they're my Reds now. We didn't quite get the, 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 the Premier League title. Uh, damn. Great comeback from City. But no, I, I think when we get into this match, you know, I do have an England ticket. So I have exposure on Liverpool and I don't want to bet them. I, when, when the final came out that Wednesday, comeback by City and I was mad in the moment and I was like, we're hitting Liverpool in the final. Like if they open plus money, I'm betting them. Well, a lot's changed for me in the last three weeks, last month, because I think, first of all, when you look at the number, Man City was plus 100, roughly plus 105 at Real Madrid. Now Liverpool is plus 100 on a neutral. So clearly there's been some market respect for Real Madrid, given that we think that, you know, roughly Liverpool and City are pretty even teams. I think the biggest thing here is the fatigue. And I understand that it's one match and you can get up for one match, but in theory, they should have been up for Sunday against wolves and they were flat. And I understand that they ended up creating almost three expected goals. A lot of it came very, very late, but they conceded over one expected goal. And really there was a lot of chances that a good, better counterattacking team would have taken advantage of than wolves. I mean, they were multiple three on two kind of runs where the last ball was poor. The cross to the back post was bad. Uh, they had a lot of chances to rip this team to shreds and transition. And I think a lot of it was just one Fabinho was out and two, they're tired. Uh, Ryan O'Hanlon, a uh, friend of the pod had Liverpool in the 95th percentile of pressing across Europe this year. Real Madrid 40th percentile as Charlie tweeted out uh, on Wednesday, Real Madrid just don't run as much. So they're not as tired and they won their league three weeks ago. So they've been rotating, relaxing. They played a couple they played a nil, nil draw. They played a one, one draw. They were rotating players in and out of their lineup, making sure everybody's ready to go. Liverpool has been going. Yes, they rotated for Southampton, but otherwise they played a cup final that went 120 minutes. Then they had to play two, you know, two hotly contested Prem matches with Villa and Spurs. Then they had the weekend against Wolves too, which they went all the way to the final minutes. So I'm concerned. And I think if, if their pressing is just a little bit off and Modric and Kroos have a little bit of time on the ball, Alexander-Arnold, I don't know how much of it is him not being a great defender versus he's just asked to get forward a lot and he's not superhuman. I mean, obviously he's not Kyle Walker to the, of, of a defender where he can get back, get in a position and always be there. He does fall asleep on the back post sometimes, but I think Vinicius is, is extremely live here. And we saw last year in the champions league that Vinicius ripped apart Liverpool. And that was really what decided their matchup. Now Van Dyke didn't play. So that's a big difference, but Vinicius is also much better. If you look at Vinicius last season, 3.2, shot creating actions per 90. This year, he's up to six. His crosses into the penalty area is up to three and a half. His passes is up to two and a half. Both are a full one and a half better in each metric. So he's getting the ball into the penalty area more. He's doing more production. He's, I think, a big reason why Benzema's had a career year at, what, age 35, 34? Uh, of course, Benzema's finishing has been insane too. 15 goals from eight expected in the Champions League is insane. Uh, so overall, you know, I think, a month ago, I would have happily bet Liverpool and said, they're going to do what BJ said. They're going to smother them. They're going to press them off the pitch. It's going to be like the Chelsea second leg where Real can't do anything. And Chelsea or Liverpool would just dominate, create way more chances and probably win because they're going to take more of those than, you know, on average, generally. Of course, you know, variance can happen. But now I just don't know because if the press is a little off and Vinicius gets up the, in the channel and Benzema does his Benzema things, there's a very clear path here for Real Madrid to... Sit back, wait, let Liverpool have it, 
let Liverpool control it, wait till Liverpool runs out of gas, and then create one, two, three attacking opportunities and then win this match, or even just get it into extra time, which, you know, if we get into extra time, we saw Liverpool was extremely dead in the extra time against Chelsea. I think it's a very real possibility. I think the longer this match goes, the more I like Real Madrid. I think I like Liverpool early because they come out firing, pressing, running. You know, maybe there is that, that revenge angle. And I understand Liverpool have conceded early, but there's been some kind of fluky goals in there. But as the game gets longer and goes deeper, I think Real Madrid looks fresher and has a chance to take advantage. So, yeah, I, I have not placed a wager on this match besides the prop, which I put, which I will get into in a second. But I'm, I'm really excited for it tactically. I think it, given the state of Manchester City right now with all their injuries, it almost sets up for a better final with it being Madrid. And I would not have said that three weeks ago.